Today, we are taking the most practical approach for reducing EMF fields in your environment, especially Wi-Fi, which is radio frequency. Magnetic and electric are two other concerns, which we will touch on. Basically, overall summary, turn off all Wi-Fi devices and don't sleep next to a circuit breaker or electrical outlets. But this is much easier said than done. The majority of you are in an environment where you cannot control every single household factor. You know, if you're in an apartment, you could be surrounded by 15 routers by all of your neighbors. If you live with your parents or siblings or roommates, you can't control their cell phone and Wi-Fi device usage. So with that in mind, there are two main things I would do if you're in that situation. One is wear protective clothing, which is what I'm actually doing right now. Uh, we made a video last week highlighting the clothing available on wifi shielding.com. So by wearing the undergarments, a t-shirt and underwear, you're able to protect your organs and reproductive system. And you can also get a head cover if you're in a really high Wi-Fi environment or if you want to use your cell phone. Number two is shield your sleeping area and also living area if possible. This can be done with a Faraday cage, which is something I've showed you guys in the past. I'll show some of the materials today that can be used to build that. Or you can buy a shielding canopy, which usually costs several hundred dollars. We have them available at the most affordable price online, wifi shielding.com. You can get a twin, queen, or king size bed canopy. Let me show you what I have in my house right now. Uh, so again, the two most important things for most people are wear protective clothing and shield the sleeping environment. Now that one thing I mentioned about not sleeping near a power line, unfortunately, the room I sleep in is usually by the power line attachment to the house, which is on the other side of the house over there. Now, if I measure the field with my meter that night and the levels are really high, I'll actually come to the dining room, I'll get the canopy set up and I'll, I'll literally sleep on the floor because the magnetic field levels in my room are so high, I literally cannot sleep. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at this canopy. I actually have two here overlapping each other. And you know, I'm in New York. And if you're in an incredibly high Wi-Fi EMF environment, uh, you might need uh, to shield the bottom underneath. Uh, and just having two on top can be just a little bit of reassurance. It's usually not necessary. When you create a Faraday cage, it's important that you ground it. So this silver fiber fabric is protecting you from any kind of beams coming in here. So this canopy has a patch on it, which has a metal button. And that metal button attaches to this wire, which comes with the canopy. And you plug it into the bottom of the electrical socket. Ideally, you don't want something else plugged into it. And what that does is since it's grounded, there's no electrical fields inside the canopy. And I'll show that to you guys with the upstairs one. So if the sleeping environment is shielded, you're able to protect yourself at least for you know the six, seven, eight hours a day that you're sleeping. Now I spend a lot of time upstairs on my computer. So what I actually did was I set up another canopy here. And you know, if you're on a budget, if you don't want to build two, you can obviously just move this up and down as you're sleeping, as you're working, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's definitely worth it. This one is grounded as well. If we take our electric and magnetic field meter, and I'll actually show you guys. So if I point the magnetic field at my circuit breaker, you know it's 200 which is pretty high. But if I go into my parents' room and point it at the circuit breaker, it's much lower, a much safer magnetic field level. So uh, something that I did plan on touching on later was these magnetic fields that come from circuit breakers, that come from power lines. Now, as we go into my sister's bedroom, the magnetic field levels are higher too when you point it at the circuit breaker. And my sister is actually sleeping downstairs in the basement now because she can't sleep upstairs. That's because you know, those power lines that are very close to the house attach to the corner of the house over there where there's a circuit breaker. So magnetic field levels are definitely not safe. I think I'll touch on these meters in another video, but the point is wherever the power lines attached to your house, you don't want that. We'll, we'll go outside and we'll measure the power lines and that later. So those high magnetic field levels are the reason I sometimes sleep in the dining room downstairs. If we switch this to electric fields, you know, the electric fields in this part of the room are 14, but electric fields come from outlets. Uh, so this is actually a filter that I plugged in to kind of reduce the dirty electricity. So it's measuring really high here, but it dissipates very quickly. Now, since this canopy is grounded, if you put this meter inside here, the electric field level should be 
much lower. They're around six or five. So the electric field levels are lower inside the canopy. Now the reason that electric field did not go lower is because this is not a true Faraday. It's just a canopy draped over my computer and there's nothing shielding the bottom. So if you did enclose something in 100% Faraday, then the electricity would accumulate inside and that's why it absolutely needs to be grounded. Uh, if you do want to know the benefits of grounding outside of making sure electricity doesn't build up, I do have a separate video on it. Either way, any sort of radiation device, electrical device, if it's not clothing on your body, it should absolutely be grounded. And even in day-to-day -day life, we should try to ground as much as possible. I guess I should explain for anyone that doesn't know what grounding is, it's an electrical current will always go to the path of least resistance. And if you're not connected to the earth, you are the path of least resistance. So as long as you are grounded in connection with the earth through some type of metal, you know, copper wire, metal wire connection, you're fine. But the main reason we're using this canopy is to block radio frequency radiation, which is measured with this meter. So outside in my room here, there's like random flashes of, of like moderate levels of radiation. But inside this canopy, it goes much lower. And I'll use my cell phone as an example. So right now my phone's on airplane mode and the meter's green. I turn it off airplane mode, goes immediately to extreme, but if I'm in the canopy and the canopy is properly closed, the levels will go to green. So levels are completely green inside the canopy for the most part. Obviously, it'll flash red a little bit because this isn't completely enclosed and the cell phone is really close. But you know, hypothetically, you know, you put your cell phone on airplane mode, which is another big thing. You know, keep your cell phone on airplane mode throughout the day, and that's going to kind of segue us into how to reduce household Wi-Fi. Uh, so just to summarize, wear protective clothing, bed canopy or Faraday cage in living area as well as sleeping area if possible are the two main things for people that can't really control their environment. Now, some material that you can use for these cages is... Uh, this is like some aluminum mesh that is used for like window screens and screen doors. And you can take this aluminum mesh, use some like two by fours or wood or something, screw it together, basically make a metal cage out of the aluminum. Then that still has to be grounded and plugged into a wall. Unfortunately for the majority of you, that's all you can really do is wear the protective clothing and shield the two main areas you're staying in. Uh, you can also keep your phone, as I just mentioned, on airplane mode and check it intermittently. I just found out you can set up, you know, Google Voice on your computer and have your computer direct wired and answer phone calls that way. We'll even have ethernet adapters soon on wifi shielding.com that allow you to plug your phone into your router and keep it on airplane mode. The only problem with that is you usually can't receive calls and text messages, but you can still use like Instagram and other messaging apps. So just to summarize throughout the day, keep the cell phone on airplane mode and you can check on it intermittently, you know, every, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, however often you have to. But what you also want to do is if you do go on the phone and need to put it near your head, you can take a head cover, put the head cover on your head. And we demonstrated this in the video last week. When you call up on the phone, you keep the phone a little far away from your head your brain is protected and you can go on the phone effectively. Uh, the main reason this head cover and t-shirt and underwear isn't adequate for sleeping in for full protection is because it's not grounded and it's not as effective at blocking all the frequencies as a canopy is. Now for most of you, that's all you can really do, but I encourage you to stick around for the next, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I think this is gonna be a pretty long video showing every single household device, how it can be reduced, what you can do about it. Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, my computer room because that's where I spend a lot of my time. So you guys got a glimpse of this filter earlier when I was measuring the electric field. You probably need about 20 or 30 of these plugged in throughout the house. What these do is they basically suck up the extra power that's flowing through the lines in your house and they store them so it doesn't get emitted through the socket itself. The problem is these are like 30 bucks each. I'm actually getting uh, some samples from China to see if the Chinese ones are the same and if they are then I can definitely get these to you guys for a heavily 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 reduced price and it's not going to cost you 
a ridiculous thousand dollars to, to plug filters into your house. So that's for electric fields. The only real way you can reduce electric fields is by plugging in these filters or you could literally just turn the power off to your house or certain rooms when you're sleeping and you might sleep a lot better. You know, the magnetic field is what we mentioned earlier, the power line attaching to that corner of the house and the circuit breaker in the garage down here is certainly a problem. Uh, but when we go down there and we go outside, we'll talk about that more. In regards to what I've done in my room, that actual green screen, that wall, there's a wall of aluminum on there protecting it from my neighbor's house. And this computer in here is direct hardwired. It's no Wi-Fi, no nothing. So I'm in here and I can just do my own thing and not worry too much about anything besides the high magnetic field levels. And I am trying to uh, move out of here as soon as possible because I think this magnetic field is killing me. Uh, so here's actually an ethernet wire running to the phone adapter that I'm currently using. Uh, sometimes I'll plug in my phone just to get a better Wi-Fi signal to check Instagram or post on social media. And that runs to my router, which I'll show you guys. And you can get these on Amazon right now for like 18 or $20. I just think I'll be able to get them for you guys cheaper in, you know, a week or two. Now into my sister's room, uh, she basically has a TV that's hardwired and there's no other Wi-Fi, no other electronics. Uh, so the only real concerns are anything coming in from the outside, uh, which could be shielded with, you know, wallpaper, paint, EMF canopies, or uh, what are they called, uh, drapes to cover that. So you can shield entire rooms. Maybe we'll get some paint, maybe we'll get wallpaper soon, but that is heavily, heavily involved because you have to actually physically ground the wall, which requires putting you know, tape up and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but my sister's room is very safe because there's no devices in here. My parents' room is another story. Uh, this was a Netflix device, which I unplugged you guys can see the fire stick is unplugged here. This was frying my parents so badly that their behavior was literally screaming and yelling at each other like lunatics every day. They were under so much stress, so much anxiety from the high frequency fields. Now, after I reduced the Wi-Fi in the household, believe it or not, my parents are much, much more pleasant to each other. They're not acting crazy and they still don't think Wi-Fi is real. So just make sure that if you have a Netflix or an Amazon or some type of device on the TV, those do emit very, very incredibly high levels of Wi-Fi signals, as strong as having a cell phone on next to your head. So I would not use them in a household. I would unplug them. I don't think they can be directly wired either, so you need to find another option to watch TV. On the other side of my parents' bed is actually the microwave, so I put some aluminum mesh screen on the back of their headboard to protect them a little bit. Oh, well, I'm glad I caught that. My mom has an electric blanket on the floor. And I have my own electric blanket downstairs that was pretty expensive. I think it was like 180 bucks, but usually they're very high electric field. So that type of standard cheap uh, electric heating blanket is something you don't want to have near your body. You can get a more expensive one that has lower levels of electric fields because it heats like stones. I'm not precisely sure how it works, but you got to spend a little bit of money to get a safe electric blanket. Now that wire from my room, which was supposed to actually be ran by an electrician through the ceiling. So, you know, there's no crazy wires running through the hallway attaches to the router. Now this router has the Wi-Fi turned off. So, you know, I went on the computer, I went into the Wi-Fi settings, I turned it off. So you cannot access Wi-Fi in this household. Um, what you could also do is you could, and I used to have it encased in uh, aluminum and metal mesh just to reduce it or encase you know, who knows if it's still emitting something, I don't know. And, and this is where all the hard wiring goes into the wall. Uh, you know, there's one ethernet cable going to hardwire my computer. There's one going to the downstairs computer. There's one going to the garage. You know, there's one going to my phone. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the router in a part of the house, turn it off and wire everything else to it. I don't really recommend having Wi-Fi on at all throughout the day in your household. If your kids want to use devices, it can absolutely be hardwired. And uh, even if you do have Wi-Fi on in the household, if you put uh, mesh over this or if you shield this a little bit, it does still reduce it, so it's better than nothing. Okay, going downstairs, you know, since there's no real hardware or devices in the bathrooms, the only concerns you have are the electrical sockets. Uh, things like hair dryers and certain household devices should certainly be addressed on an individual basis, but a hair dryer is certainly frying your brain. You know, a place like here, this part of the house that's really open and has a neighbor's house, you know, right across, you know, the neighbor's Wi-Fi is constantly, I get signals coming in here. It could also be their smart meter. 
and I'll show you guys the electrical meter on my house. Uh, this is something that's always overlooked. These RoboVacs, which is unplugged, emit incredibly high levels of Wi-Fi radiation. So if you have a RoboVac, get rid of it. My brother bought this for my parents. I told him to stop using it. Now this phone is special in a sense that it doesn't emit radiation. It's a hardwired cable phone. And any wireless phone, I believe they call them DECT, D-E-C-T phones, emit pretty high levels of signals. You know, my grandma had one next to her bed where she was sleeping. I think she just put it back. But you want to take out the old phone and put in something old school, something that's hardwired. And this is like a 50-foot cable, which can go pretty far throughout the house. So you have one or two of these in the house. You know, you have a safe, low Wi-Fi way of speaking to people on the phone. That brings us to the most common household device there is, the microwave, which emits dangerous levels of all types of radiation, to my understanding, radio frequency, magnetic, and electric, especially when it's on. Uh, when I get my own place, I am ripping the microwave out of the wall. You know, my parents don't seem to really care that they have an x-ray in their kitchen, but yeah, I mean, this is probably the highest on the list of devices that need to be removed from the house. Uh, we have another TV down here, but again, it's hardwired. You know, there's no sort of signal coming out of anything here. Uh, the one thing to be concerned about kitchen devices in general is newer devices, whether it's a dishwasher, an oven, or a refrigerator, they come with new smart technology which can emit very high levels of radio frequency radiation. So I would definitely avoid the newer products and actually buy older or used stuff. Uh, same thing applies to the cars, which uh, something I just discovered yesterday. So now we're going down to the computer room. Uh, we have my lovely sister on the computer and this TV actually had a Netflix device as well and I unplugged it I turned it off this was actually radiating my parents because they're above the ceiling and they were also getting radiated by the microwave and their Netflix device upstairs so they were getting completely fried and cooked um, th this computer is also directly wired as well and my mom bought a new printer last a uh, week or well two or three weeks ago and it was basically frying all of us until I realized oh she bought a new printer and forgot to turn the Wi-Fi off the printer so you have to go into the printer yeah, settings I need the wi -Fi, though. I'm using the computer though. no Gina the, the printer is directly hardwired to the computer so it prints without needing Wi-Fi oh. and the computer is directly hardwired to the internet so it doesn't need a Wi-Fi signal so you have to go into the settings of the printer and make sure that it's off and there's different ways to do that depending on your printer model I turn this off I'm gonna double check if uh, the Wi-Fi signal will actually turn back on later I'm not sure but it should be off dishwasher washing machine obviously any sort of device whether it's this or the fridge you don't want to be sleeping next to it because uh, it will emit some type of magnetic or electric field in close proximity the overarching concern is the new smart technology and devices that can uh, emit very very high levels of far traveling fields now we're in the garage and the real big concern here is the circuit breaker for this video i'm not going to grab those meters and show you guys levels and this and that anymore mainly because that should really be saved for a video talking about meters and most of you guys don't have them what i will say down here in the garage the circuit breaker has varying levels of magnetic fields. Sometimes it goes very high and they're actually dangerous. Sometimes it's much lower and actually safe. I'm in contact with Con Edison about that. And uh, when I do make that video on which meters to get that are reasonably affordable, you know, you do want to make sure that there's no faulty wiring or that Con Ed isn't pumping electricity into your house because that'll increase the magnetic fields really, really, really high from like um, 80 to 100 nanoteslas which is a unit of measurement up to like 800, 900 nanoteslas, which I believe converts to like nine milligauss. I mean, that's above most of our heads. Point is the circuit breaker is right here in the garage. And when I work out a lot, when I'm 10, 15 feet away from it, I'm basically cooking myself. So you really don't want to be living or sleeping or working near a circuit breaker at all at any point during the day. And the main problem is in this house, the circuit breaker is in the corner over there my room is right up here and my sister's bedroom is also right up here so the circuit breaker is in very close proximity uh, to the bedrooms what's even worse is where the power line physically attaches to the house that's right by my bedroom and across from my sister's bedroom and i can't believe they had a bedroom here where the power line connects that is to me absolutely insane and if you take a meter 
and you start measuring those magnetic fields near these power lines, that's where they would be very, 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 very high. So ideally, if you buy a house, it's on the opposite side of the street to the power lines, not on the same side. We should still take a look at the smart meter and then we can talk about uh, low EMF vehicles. Uh, if I actually measure the Wi-Fi levels here, they're high because my neighbor has something going on. I don't know what device he has in his house, but it's frying this area. When I used to lay out here and tan, I would get headaches and that was why. So this is a digital electric meter that has to be manually read. And if you reach out to Con Edison, you can pay them a monthly fee to remove your smart meter. Um, I actually want to test this to see if the levels go up higher at night versus during the day to see if they're pumping electricity into the house. That might answer some questions. That's a side thing. But you guys see I have some mesh around here. And on the other side of the wall in the garage, there's mesh against it. So you can enclose a smart meter in metal in shielding devices and completely block the signal. This, as I said, is a digital meter that we paid Con Edison for per month so that we don't have the smart meter radiating us. You can call up the cable company. I think there's a form you have to send them. It's called a smart meter opt-out form. You can look that up and send that to your energy company. Worst case scenario, if you're stuck with the smart meter, you can shield the inside as well with the mesh. Unfortunately, nothing blocks magnetic fields. I'm not sure if I said that in this video. You cannot block a magnetic field from a circuit breaker or a power line. Uh, I mean, maybe if you had like uh, 3,000 pounds of lead over here dissipating it, but it's not practical. A lot of the EMF shielding equipment and technology available out there is for incredibly expensive high-end commercial use, like, uh, I don't know, Chernobyl type stuff, where these companies are spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on equipment to shield themselves. So from a residential perspective, you're not going to be able to reduce a lot of these fields efficiently. But I think we've gone over just about every single possible household device I can think of. Uh, again, the main concern being those Wi-Fi fields. Simply by turning everything off, you can reduce that. But you know, without a meter, it is a bit hard to identify if there's still a device on or what devices are emitting those frequencies. All right, we'll see if I think of anything else. But in the meantime, uh, we can talk about cars. Now, I wasn't planning on speaking about this today, but one of my viewers coincidentally sent me an email about low EMF cars. And this is a 2001 Ford Taurus, which I joke about how cheap it is. Um, but the thing is, it's a very, very low EMF car because the engine is, is pretty far in front of the vehicle. So are most of the electronic devices. There's very few electronics in the car. So a 2001 Ford Taurus is one of the safest vehicles. And I believe uh, diesel engines in general, which aren't as available in the United States, are much safer. Uh, we did upgrade the Taurus a little bit, boys. We got... Uh, new front brakes and rotors installed. I did them. I did the struts, did the power steering pump. So, you know, buy an older car, fix it up. It's easier to maintain. It's easier to fix on your own. And it's low EMF. Uh, my mom has a new Mazda uh, that she hasn't drove. I don't know why they bought a car in this time, but it's probably a relatively high EMF car. And guys, this is excluding the Tesla. We did a video driving a Tesla around. That is basically driving in a microwave. Even if you don't have an electric car or a Tesla, I mean, yeah, those are much, much, much worse. The average modern car, just the engine, the mechanics in it, can emit very high levels of magnetic and electric, let alone those radio frequency fields we see in the newer cars. I believe that article said, like, diesel engine cars from the 1980s are the best things to drive. So, you know, if you wanna drop like 15, 20K on a 40 year old car, and fix it up, that would be the most efficient way to reduce uh, the Wi-Fi EMF. Maybe uh, Frankie Boy can save up for that for a year or two and that'll be his uh, present to himself. I mean, overall, again, we wanna relay back to that simple stuff we said at the start. Wear protective clothing, shield your head with a head cover when you're on the phone, and protect your sleeping areas. That is a great first step. If you do have more control, if, if you can you know, mess around with more factors in your environment, then by all means, um, that will open up more opportunities to reduce the oxidative stress caused by the Wi-Fi. You know, things we didn't talk about are topics I've covered in other videos. You know, why is Wi-Fi harmful? What type of clothing should I wear? Why are microwaves dangerous? I always miss something that I want to talk about. So I'm really trying to dig into my brain that's getting fried by this power line right now. I mean, overall, this is something that you will notice. 
you know, if I go out to my front yard and I touch the tree and I ground myself, oh, well, that is something we didn't talk about, grounding. I do have a separate video on grounding, which you should definitely watch. Um, grounding is another thing kind of related to EMF, but not really. But again, overall, if you know what it's like to be in a low Wi-Fi environment and then you are put in a high Wi-Fi environment, which is what most people are used to, you can tell a drastic, drastic difference. So I guess that's it for today, guys. I know this video has been a little bit long and a little all over the place, but there's no other real way to do this. There's so much to cover on the topic of household Wi-Fi, EMF, things to reduce. And, you know, not everyone has the opportunity to, you know, buy a house out in the middle of nowhere and hardwire and, you know, unlimited funds on contractors to do everything how it should be done. Uh, you know, make your best effort with your budget, what you can expend to reduce the Wi-Fi EMF as much as possible. And then once you experience the lower environment, once you feel better, once you understand the importance of it, then you can invest more time and money into fixing things. Uh, so I'm going to do one last run through of my house to see if I think of anything or if I missed anything. Uh, but if there's no more clips, I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Thank you for joining me. I mentioned the Wi-Fi shielding.com. You can check out all the other videos I've done on Wi-Fi EMF. Uh, frank stefanocom if you guys do want to reach out to me uh, to speak about this further. I guess one more bonus thing I can touch briefly on, which deserves its own video, is like blue light blocking stuff, which pales in comparison to Wi-Fi EMF. So, yeah, I mean, blocking blue light, especially at night before you're going to bed, is important, but I have a feeling that was some type of a distraction and a way to get people to reduce Wi-Fi EMF without actually telling them the truth about what it is. So I'm sitting here editing this video and I noticed that there were some devices I don't personally have that you guys probably have in your homes, such as like some type of security cameras that usually run on Wi-Fi. You could also have like an Amazon Alexa or some type of Google Home device, very high levels of radiation, and also like a doorbell or a door camera. Basically anything that runs on Wi-Fi, aka radio frequency, Bluetooth, headsets, a lot of things are commonly overlooked. And you know, when you're trying to reduce EMF exposure as much as possible, there's some really, really silly things that can be alleviated fairly easily. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the Wi-Fi EMF videos that I've ever made on my channel. I'm going to put them into a playlist for you guys. Uh, but thanks again for watching this video today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you.